naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Iggy here. Episode 184. Hope you can stick around and just kind of be on the air with me here for a little bit. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to give thanks. We're going to offer um, some some prayers to those who need prayers right now. People are going through a lot of stuff at this moment. And so we're going to uh, just kind of acknowledge them. I want to say hi to everybody who's online with me here. I want to welcome you to the show. This is Iggy Garcia Live. From time to time, I bounce from uh, Facebook uh, to Instagram to TikTok. I kind of shoot it around. Kind of mix it up, and also on YouTube, you can find my my channel, Iggy Garcia, uh, at YouTube. Uh, it's good to be here. You know, subscribe to my page there. Invite your friends to the page. There's past shows. There's about a hundred. Uh, it's actually over a thousand different shows that I've done over the years. So if there's something there that you want to uh, take a look at, share, uh, it's there for you. So we're going to get started here, and we're just going to give thanks to our ancestors. Give thanks to everybody who's come before us. Honor them. Thank them for um, just taking those steps in time to progress and bring us forward into this moment. Because a lot of times we, um, we don't remember the people who came before us because they, they trailblazed uh, something that, you know, is very unique, very different. They lived in a different time and different era, a different moment, different time in history. A lot of our ancestors, we don't even remember. A lot of people will be forgotten through time. Hopefully none of us will be forgotten if that's not our, our goal, or our journey to be remembered, then that's fine. But for some of us, it's important to remember and be remembered for our legacy and the things that we did and we've done and the things that we share with the world. So if you're able to do that and you're able to connect with your ancestors, uh, the simplest way to connect with them is just acknowledge them, light a candle for them as I have in, on my altar there, giving thanks to them and creating a little safe space for them to come into your space. So how do you know your ancestors are here? It's because you kind of get those little tingles in your arm sometimes and you can feel them. It's kind of that energy and that, that kind of stuff that rolls to your body. And so it just kind of gives you a little shivers. So I'll be teaching a class of uh, here about uh, shamanism, Peruvian and urban and suburban and rural shamanism uh, in Bell Fountain, Ohio, Zendoa, uh, Zendoa healing center, which is in Bell Fountain, Ohio. I'll get the address for you here. I'll post it in the comments. For those of you who are interested, that's from one to four. And then we're going to have a drum circle after that. It's pretty exciting. Then in Zanesville, Ohio, at the end of the month, the 24th through the 25th, we're going to be doing a solstice retreat. It's a two-day retreat. For those of you who are interested, it's $44 or $26 for one day. So basically what you're going to do is be camping out, hanging out with like-minded people. Uh, We're going to be doing um, drum circles. We're going to be doing ceremony. We're going to be doing... um, uh, meditations. We're going to do a Shakti shakedown. We're going to be doing the whole, the whole thing. So those of you who are online, look for my, my, uh, my connections there, my as vertiments that have come through or through Facebook or through Instagram, or you can go to my website and check it out as well at com. For those of you who want to sign up to my uh, subscribe list there, keep you in touch and keep you informed of all the things that I'm doing, all the things that I'm going. And so there's an events page section two where you can see all the drummings that are happening uh throughout the course of this year yeah so you have to plan these things here in in advance because you get pretty busy when you do drum circles as many as i do sometimes so you have to leave room for other things that you do as well so i wanted to uh, open up this show here today and for those of you who are able to stay with me or want to share or have any questions as well i'll be open for comments as well so those of you who want to uh participate in that aspect give you guys a reading and share with you share with you uh thoughts so today i'm here to talk a little bit about what's probably what happens to everybody myself included everyone so manifestation so i'm gonna i'm gonna show you a picture of myself when i was a younger person this is me when i was a younger person a little bit thinner (laughs) i think i have more hair than i had there i don't know how that happened but maybe that's manifestation so creation so the idea is this as we are progressing through life 
there's changes that happen in our life. We There's things that happen to us. There's things that automatically just move us into a new direction and put us into a new frame of mind. And so we're going through a whole a whole spiel of uh, of emotional, psychological, physical changes in our body. And this is a normal thing. So for a lot of us, you know, we have to keep in mind that when life gives us lemons, we make lemonade or margaritas, whatever that is. If life gives us cucumbers, well, we make cucumber salads or we put cucumbers in our eyes. Regardless, so, so what I'm here to talk about today is this thing that we call manifestation. Manifestation. The laws of attraction. The laws of vibration. The laws, the laws, the laws. La 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 laws. So, you know, most of us here have one time or another picked up a book like this. And I read books. Yes, I read books. This is called Napoleon Hill's Keys to Success. This is one of many books. This guy, if you know the story of Napoleon Hill, he uh, he wrote a book. And he wrote a book about, uh, geez, I can't remember the guy's name now. It slipped my mind. But anyhow, he was commissioned to write a book. But he didn't get paid for it. He didn't get paid for it because the guy who gave him the information, I'll let you guys read it out so you can figure it out, basically said, well, I just gave you the keys to success, so now go make a book and go earn yourself a living with that. And so, you know, Dale Carnegie, that was his name, Dale Carnegie. That, it took me a second there. My computer's a little slow today. I don't know why. Peaches, peaches, peaches. <laughs> Too much hanging out with the grandkids this weekend. <laughs> I'm still in kid mode. But anyhow, so all of us, all of us, you, me included, there's not one human being who hasn't created. There's not one human being on this planet who has no, has not wanted desirable things and things in their lives, things that they wanted to create and manifest or put into effect. All of us, all, every single one of us have, have done this. And so what we're doing here is trying to make our lives better, right? And we're trying to do better things by doing better things. And we figure if we do better things, we get better things and we get more things. And because we come from a way or place of, I want, I want, I want. Human beings kind of want, I want, I want, I want the house, I want the car. I want the significant other who will love me through my faults. I don't know why I did that accent, but anyhow, it's there. But so I'm here to talk a little bit about this because I find it very fascinating through the work that I do with my client base and the people that I work with through drumming and through meditation, through all the works I do. People struggle. Even healers struggle. People who I, you know, who do this work struggle to struggle to find their path, find their way. And a lot of it is because it's a loaded, it's a loaded word. Manifestation is a loaded word. It's extremely loaded. Uh A lot of you have watched The Secret. A lot of you have watched different programs. And all these programs, they don't necessarily promise you anything. You assumed that they promised you things. You assumed, and I assumed, it was that easy. <clears throat> what if I told you it wasn't that easy? What if I told you I said, yes, it is that easy? Be like, oh, no, but I tried it. What for five minutes, ten minutes? These are questions we need to ask ourselves. When we manifest, when we're creating, do we have a timetable? Do we set a time to have these things? So I'm here, I'm thinking to myself, okay. A timetable, creation, all right, how's, how's this all work? Here's the thing. Here's what I find. This is just my theory. These are just my ideas and the things that I think happen to people when they start creating is that they create this illusion in this, of this desire of this thing that they want. And sometimes I think that when we create this illusion, the desire, we figure, well, if it worked for this guy, it should work for me. Well, why doesn't it work for me? Well, I'll tell you why it doesn't work for you, Mr. and Mr. and Mrs. and all of you and they and above and below. 
I'll tell you why it doesn't work. I'll tell you why exactly why it doesn't work. It doesn't work is because you're not committed and you're not your desire for it is not as strong as you think it is. Yes, I'll say it again. If you're not committed. You're not committed to the process because if you're committed to the process, you would have what you have. So look at what you have now. Just let's, let's look in our life right now. Let's look in front of us. What kind of car do you drive? Okay, take a moment to think about that. It shouldn't be too hard. Okay, what kind of house do you have? Okay, pretty good. What kind of job do you have or business do you have? Okay, take a moment to think about that. What kind of relationship are you in? Okay, if you're married, what kind of marriage are you in? Is this the kind of marriage you wanted? Is this the idea you want? If you're dating someone, are you dating them because such and such? Because you're in love. Oh, I'm in love. Well, as soon as that infatuation wears off, what happens? Infatuation can last a lifetime. You can wait. You can be with someone for thirty years and wake up and go one day. Oh, who the heck is you? Who are you? I don't know you. I don't know if I really jive with you. This has happened. Hopefully, the infatuation wears off quicker and sooner for some people. But you know, sometimes it doesn't. But here's what I'm going to tell you. You can think that you are pinpoint accurate in in your desire is exactly what you want. But I'm here to tell you one thing. It is not. It is not. If you have done any research on people who have what you want, then you will realize what it takes to get what you want. Most of us are not willing to do what it takes to get what you want. Oh, but I need my weekends. I need my friends. I need my, I need this. I need that. Sometimes you have to sell everything sometimes to get to in places that you want to be. A lot of people are not willing to do these sacrificial things that they have to. Do you have to sacrifice everything? Not necessarily. But I'm going to tell you, I know and I have read of people who have slept in cars. I've read the people who have bounced from couch to couch, you know, been evicted, lost everything. Most of you are not willing to lose anything. Most of you are afraid to lose anything, anything You're afraid to lose anything you have. You're afraid to lose your friendships, your relationships, your house, your so-called security, anything that you think is, is there to help you. Most of you, if you lost things and you're, you're trying to create a business, a format or whatever, you are afraid to lose things. And the main reason why people don't succeed is because they're afraid to lose the smallest things that they have in their lives. They may be significant in the moment. They may be powerful in the moment, but they don't want to lose that. They don't want to lose that. They don't want to lose that. And the reason they want to lose that is because they associate themselves to these successes. Look what I've created. I've created a, a tincture. I am King Tincture. Now I will heal all ailments of my body. And that's how far it goes. And then there are other people like, well, I want to create a tincture business. What would that mean? I want to create all these things that would help myself and help others. When you help others succeed, you succeed. When you help other people make it, you make it. If you make it all about you, you don't make it. Why do people give up? Why do people quit? Well, that's the first reason that people quit. Not because it's hard. Not because someone said they give up because they listen to the wrong people. The first person you talk to is usually your mom, your dad, your significant other, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your best pal who doesn't want to lose you in the process because if he, if you start a business, then you guys can't hang out anymore. And it's not that they're sabotaging you. They're just self-sabotaging themselves about the situation that you gave them 
and you ask them to give you an opinion about, which they are not qualified to give you an opinion about, which you should ask them how they felt about, which is different than giving somebody your thoughts about how they think about something. A lot of people don't succeed because you have to do things that you're not comfortable and you're used to doing. You know, when you work in, I owned restaurants, you know, you worked in a restaurant, you had to be there almost 24 seven, not because I wanted to, not because I wanted to, it's because it was demanded of me. The restaurant demanded of me to be present because I didn't believe enough in my spirit and soul that that place would be successful without me. That was my mistake. And that was my failure in the restaurant business. I tried, but I had listened to the wrong advice, regardless of what you know other people have told me. I should have hired a manager, somebody who can run the ship. Look, the military is designed the same way, right? They have an admiral, they have you know captains, they have lieutenants, they have, and there's a reason for that because you cannot run a ship alone. You can run maybe on a sailboat, maybe on, on a little canoe. Yeah, but you get what I'm saying. If you want a battleship, if you want the aircraft carrier, well, you're not you're not driving that thing by yourself. It's not going to navigate through the water. Same with your dreams and your successes. Your dreams and your successes are based upon what you put into it. And most of you are not willing to put damn thing into it. You're going to put the most minimal thing into it, and you're going to go like this. You're going to just poke at it. Well, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, then I haven't lost nothing. Because you're just poking at it. And those of you who want to be holistic healers and those of you who want a business, treat it like a business. It's a business. I don't care if people say, well, you're charging, you're charging for the the gifts and you're the gift. No, you're not charging for gifts. You're charging for your time. When you invest in yourself and you invest in your business, when you're investing, it's because you are investing in you. You are already talented. You're already gifted. You already got the magic. When when people come to you, they're coming to you because they they want something from you that they lack, that they don't have. They want to hear something they, they haven't heard. So you're as you're in business and you're doing and this isn't any business, because I've been in conventional business and I've been in the metaphysical business. Listen, when people don't give to you and reciprocate to you, that's on you because you didn't ask, number one. Number two, it has to be normal. It has to be a process because no man, no woman eats the air, as far as I know. And there are some people who say they can absorb the sun's energy and survive. Okay, that's fine, but I don't feel like doing that right now. I would like to have, you know, some salad from time to time and a piece of chicken or fish. But you got to pay for that. You have to pay for that. So this is what you do. You are not paying for the gifts. You are paying for the person's investment in time, in the energy, in the knowledge base that they've created and they've learned throughout their course of their lifetime, through schooling, through life skills, through these things. So those of you also who are here online, who are watching the show, understand that these people who invest in you, these people who care about you, these people who are working with you, they invest their time and energy. As a client, you should be aware that these folks have given a lot of time and effort of their business. If they choose not to charge you, that's one thing. That's between you and them. But go always with the mindset. You know, one of the biggest things that I find is everybody likes everything for free. That's fine. You know, that's that's cool. We like free things. Nothing's free. It's just it's a perception of freedom, yes. But, you know, I want a free reading. Okay, so it's a popcorn reading. If you can extrapolate from a popcorn reading and you can pull something out of that, well, then that's great. But the healer needs to be compensated for the time and the investment of they have invested into you. You can never pay for their gift. You can never pay for a healer's gift. You can never pay for someone who does any of these metaphysical, shamanic, whatever you want to call it, these works, these, these psychics, these mediums, these readers. You're investing in the time that they have taken to learn the process to give you and be able to channel that energy to you. Your investment is to pay them according to the services they render. 
in the old days, they give you a chicken or a cow, right? Well, we don't live in the old days now. We live in today. And today, we use dollars, coins, whatever. And we do energy shares from healer to healers. But I find sometimes customers, you know, get confused and they think that, oh, okay. You know, ask, you know, I always ask. And so when we come back into this manifestation fold, as a customer, you're, you're, you're asking for things, right? You're asking for this. You're asking for that. What are you giving back in return? You know, what do you give back in return? The small business person, they're not small because they want to be small. They tailor their energy and their desires uh, to be smaller because they feel they have more control over the thing. Mostly if a business becomes super successful, it's out of control. It's so out of control that you don't even know what to do with it. Like UPS, it runs itself. There are a few people who push buttons and levers and stuff and a few human interactions that are there. But I'll tell you, the majority of the people who work at UPS watch these things go down conveyor belts, get on trucks, and these trucks drive off. You know, artificial intelligence has moved this package to the next department, to the next rail, to the next system, to the next conveyor. And humanity is doing the same thing. And the reason why most people don't have what, what they don't have in their life is because of old programming. It's old programming. You can call it bullshit. You can call it whatever you want. It could be whatever it is, but it's there. It's old and it doesn't serve you because if it served you, you would be in a lot in much better direction than you are today. For instance, are you in a relationship because you want to be, because you know, you're, you're there, you've known this person for so long that now it's just like, well, we have to be together because that's fine. I can't tell you, I can't give you an answer for that. But when you complain and when you, when you tell people that you're unhappy and this and that, people are always going to jump on your side. People are going to support you. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Well, shit. That guy's an asshole. That girl, you, know, you should leave him. You know, blah, blah. You hear this stuff. You you, you watch it. You, you, you've been part of it. You've been the person doing it. You've been the person who's done it. And so when we manifest, we create. It's also about recreating. Inside the manifestation of creation, you have to recreate. When the manifestation is not, a, not happening, it's because you have to recreate these things that aren't working. You know, it's like trying to put a square peg into a small round hole. I'm like, well, it worked last time. No, it never worked before. You, you started with the round hole, and that was your desire, and you have the square peg, and you can't get it in. You're like, why won't it work? Because you're working with the wrong pieces. You're working with the wrong pieces. You have your job as a manifestator, a manifestationist, or manifester, whatever the word we want to use, is to find the pieces and parts that are not working and change them. Oh, yeah, it's hard sometimes. Oh, yeah, it's going to be difficult. Oh, yeah. But if you keep repeating the same story over and over and over and over, what happens? You keep programming yourself. You keep putting the doo-doo da-da in your head. And that's what happens to all of us. Me too, everybody included. We keep telling ourselves the same story. And to the point where the trauma that was the first thing that, that helped, that actually hurt us, is completely different because everything that we told ourselves has totally been rewritten because we are so wounded and so upset and so frustrated and so fragile and our egos get in the way. That we can't, we can't, we can't function. Oh, but you don't understand my situation. I don't care about your situation, man. Your situation ain't any better than my situation. What gives you the right to say my situation isn't is as valid as yours? See, but we all try to compare our traumas and our situations and our problems, and we try to say, oh, well, my problem's better. My oh, my problem. You know, great, okay. Because that is what is given to you. That's what is in front of you. You have to find them. You have to find the, the cognitive pieces and parts to help yourself through that situation. Nobody can help you. People will walk with you and walk and be in guidance with you up to a point where they watch you actually commit to that manifestation, that creation. If you don't commit, people don't commit either. 
You teach people how to treat you. You teach people how to behave. We all do in shades of gray. Oh, but you know, they have this problem or that problem. And I, you know, listen, there's an old story that was told to me by one of my teachers. And I always found this story very powerful and very, very significant to any day and time in any course in history. So there was this young girl and she was very ill and she was very sick. Okay. And for years, no one could figure out what was wrong with her. Nobody knew, you know, that what was going on in her mind. She had just shut down, didn't want to live. And she just went into a negative, deep depression. She didn't eat well. She didn't do well. And, you know, but, you know, she had an ally. She had, she had her mom. And you can reverse the stories however you want. But her mom was there. Her mom was like, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to make sure you're good. That you're okay. I'm going to make sure nothing happens to you. I'm going to make sure. But, you know, the daughter kept going, oh, I'm sick. I don't feel good. I don't know what's wrong with me. And blah, blah. And throughout life, she just, for 30 years, it was like this. And the poor mom, every day, she'd come in with her food and would set it on the table. And check on her daughter and make sure she was okay. And the same thing, the same story, the same programming. And you know, going through her head and her mom every day. And then one day, the daughter's screaming and yelling. You know, and she's going through her ranting how she always does. But what the daughter didn't realize is that the mother had passed away. That she had died in the kitchen laying on the floor for days. And the daughter yelling and screaming, where's my food? Where's this? Where's that? Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Where's my... You don't love me. You hate me. Blah, 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 blah. You know, all the things that the daughter was just going through. And then a month passed. They were so isolated. They had burned everybody and that nobody even visited them anymore. And the one day the daughter finally just gets the courage and she rolls and falls to the ground off the bed, screaming for her mother, yelling. And she finally pulls herself up. And God knows when the last time she had bathed or walked. And she began to grab and walk calling for her mom 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 why have you forsaken me where are you why have you abandoned me and she's walking and she walks and she finally makes it to the kitchen <laughs> at that moment At that moment, she, she sees her mother had passed. At that moment, she realized, she realized that she had walked in search and looking. Nothing left. There was no one there to take care of her. There was nobody there to fend for her. There was no one there to support her. And then the daughter, saddened, just walks out the door and walks down the steps. And whatever story she creates from that moment on is hers. And she finally was left the bed after 30 years, my gosh. So this story is a very powerful story because it's how we give our power away. How we give ourselves away to other people. Both these persons gave each other away. The daughter gave away her strength, her power, her resilience, her youth, her life to be sick because it was more 
powerful being a sick person. I'd always tell people the, the person the sickest, the person who's the most powerful is the person laying on your table or in your bed, in the bed. They control and they dictate sometimes what goes on and how they heal. She finally woke up to the idea that, you know, there was no one else who's going to be there to support her. Her poor mother had to die for her to realize this fact. And the poor mother invested her whole life in supporting her daughter. And her dream was to support her, but yet she gave up her dream in order to make sure that she was fine. And they both, and it's a sad story because they both ended up losing. One was freed from the burdens of the daughter through death. One was free from the burdens of the mother through death, but the possibility of creating a new life. And so the daughter eventually decided that I'm going to get off the bed because I need to know what's wrong. She knew if she did not get off that bed, she would die too. She didn't even know her mom died. But she did know something was wrong. And so for a lot of us, we go through life like this, giving away our energy, giving away our power, just being normal or average because I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to cause a problem. I don't want to cause a situation. But listen, the baby who doesn't cry that doesn't eat in any species Especially humans. We're very vulnerable. We need humans. Humans need humans. A baby born does not just walk, you know, does not just walk and begin to do its thing. No. A baby born needs a lot of attention, needs a lot of help, and needs a lot of caress. It needs to be held. Take a moment here for pause if you've not subscribed to my youtube channel go to iggy garcia and look me up iggy garcia it's good to be here just like it says on the microphone and my youtube channel subscribe 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 tell your friends about it or i'm on facebook i'm on tiktok instagram just share these ideas share these thoughts and so if you want more information about the work i do it's at iggygarcia.com Share that with your friends. So we're going to go back, back to our show here. <coughs> so a lot of us, the reason we don't create, we don't manifest, manifest and we don't get it is because we're lazy and we're not willing to do the work. Most people won't tell you that. You're just, you don't give a damn, you're lazy and you think you'll do it tomorrow and that's enough. And when tomorrow comes, you do the same thing. And then you procrastinate and you put it off and then nothing happens. And most of you are not willing to rebuild and restart again. Many of you are not, not willing to start again. Sometimes when you're creating and manifesting the things you want, sometimes you got to fall on the ground, flat on your face, flat on your ass, and then you have to get back up. Most of you are not willing to do that because you're trying to pick up the pieces and parts as they're crumbling and you think that's going to help. Well, sometimes you can pull it together, but most of the time it's not. And then some of you get to the top, to this top, and this top that it's illusionary top because it doesn't really exist. This place where you've never been and you think that's the top and that's not the top. The cream is rising, yes, and you're getting some success, yes, but all of a sudden you're an ass to everybody around you and you're creating animosity and creating things that aren't worthy. And then all of a sudden everybody who you thought was on your team is not on your team because they don't want nothing to do with you because they don't like which way this ship is going and being navigated. Nobody tells you this stuff. Nobody tells you this stuff because nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to admit, oh, I'm wrong. Oh, I screwed up. Oh, wow, geez, I'm not as talented as I thought I was. Oh, wow, I need to learn more skills. Oh, wow, I need to hire more people. Oh, wait a minute, I need to find somebody who knows how to do this. Most successful people hire people who know how to do things better than them. 
the majority of your wealthy entrepreneurs, your Elon Musk, Elon Musk did not build a rocket by himself. Henry Ford didn't build the first V8 engine by himself. You know, oh, he's a racist. I'm not talking about him being a racist. I'm not talking about Elon Musk being this. I'm talking about people who are successful, why they are successful, why you are not successful, and why they're successful. This is a show about manifestation creation, why you're not creating and manifesting, because you have excuses for everything you hear. Most people are so worried about the things that things they do. Listen, when you go to the top, it's not always pretty. It's not always a pretty place. It's not always the best place to be at the top. Because staying at the top, you have to work harder to stay at the top. And now we watch shows where they say, oh, people are being enslaved and to pull out the coal boat, you know, out, out of these mines that people shouldn't be inside these mines, pulling them out so we can have these fancy cell phones so we can call our friends and FaceTime and dance on TikTok and, and do these live shows called on Instagram, Iggy Garcia Live and all that. You know, do, do most of us even care about these other people, you know, and there's need? No, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we may care. In the moment, oh yeah, oh my God, we'll send that. I'll send that to all my friends. These poor people, these poor people digging in the gold mine, digging in the cobalt mine, so you can have a phone. Manifestation takes work. You got to work. If you don't want to work, you don't want to do it. You have to create ideas. Work doesn't mean hard work. Work means creating with like your brain, creating with your mind, your spirit, your soul. You got to work every day. You got to wake up and say, Hey, I'm going to get better at this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to work through this. I'm going to make sure that, you know, my legacy is remembered and my family remembers and that they have money to the end. Oh, but you, you, we might hurt people along the way. Well, you're hurting people already. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting people along the way when you do or don't, you know? You know, one person's decision affects everybody. You don't pay your rent to your landlord. Does that affect the landlord? Yes, it does. It affects the whole it whole system. Because now the landlord's out. He's got to pay his money and, you know, he's got to work. Most people don't realize when you make a decision that it is detrimental to somebody else's well-being because you can't and you're not willing to do the work and put the effort into it, that affects a whole line of things. It opens up and changes a whole different system of, of creation. You know, when someone makes a decision to not do something and not to stand up and not to be heard, not to be, it affects the world. It affects everything. We all sit here and act like, like the, the decisions we make are just for us and my family and just me. No, 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 no. Any decision that you make, positive or good, any decision you decide that is going to be made, these decisions to be on this show affects the world. So when I turn this phone on, it does something, something happens. When you decide that you won't help a homeless person because, you know, that's not my problem, it affects the world. If you help a homeless person, and it might be that moment in time where they need help and you help them. That affects the world. You don't put your trash out on trash day. That affects the world. If it not, it doesn't affect your world. It affects the world. Everything affects the world. Everything. We are so connected that we affect one another's lives. Oh, no, man. I'm here in Columbus, Ohio. And then, no, no, no. Everywhere. Someone dumps paper and pollutes the ocean on that side of the world. It affects the world. Proof is in the pudding. You can see it every day. But we choose to go like this. We choose to go, oh, I don't see anything. <laughs> I don't see anything. <laughs> Nothing going on over there. I can't see it. Nothing going on over there. I can't see it either. You see anything, George? No, I just see George. What's up, George? You see the world falling apart? Nah, it ain't falling apart, man. Oh, it's all cool, man. We're good. 
<laughs> what was that, Georgia? I don't know. Someone must have knocked me over. This haphazard thinking that we have, that we think that, you know, it's kind of like the butterfly effect. You know, when the butterfly flaps its wings, some people think it's a myth and some people think it's not true. But when the butterfly flaps its wings, it kicks up and it moves pollen and it moves dirt and it moves, creates a whole cascade of things to happen. You know, even in my environment right now, when I'm moving my arms like this, I'm moving particles of air particulates in the air. Some will go into my lungs. Some will land over there. That regardless, it's happening. You want to manifest? You want to create? Then don't be late. Don't be late to restart. Don't get hung up on the things that you're hung up on. But I didn't get a car. I only got this car. It's a stepping stone to the car you want. Now, if you're satisfied with the car you have, okay, fine. Then move on. But if you want that Lamborghini, what's it take to get a Lamborghini? Let's see. Let's think about that. Well, not a lot of people go, oh, well, I manifested a man. I wanted a Lamborghini. <coughs> <coughs> well, why didn't you get a Lamborghini, sir or ma'am? Pretty simple. You don't have the right vehicle. You don't have the right tools. It's like a plumber trying to be an electrician, right? You can't use pipe wrenches inside the the box, you know, the electrical box to change the wires. You need the right tools. And so is in manifestation. You need the right tools. You need the right frame of mind. You need the right thinking. Quit with the thinking, thinking, thinking. Plumber ain't going to be an electrician, right? He's going to use his tools. But an electrician can't use a plumber, fix plumbing with his tools. Very rare. So when you're creating and manifesting and you're trying to create this life that you want, you need the right tools. You need the right teachers. You need the right friends. You need the right books to read. You need the right information to gather. You need to listen to the right music. You need to listen to all the things that put you in that frame of mind. Listen, if I want to be a motivational speaker, where do I hang out? What do I do? Well, I try to find all the information I can on motivational speaking, right? I will find books. I will find uh, videos. I will find people who do it. I will go to lectures and, and watch how they do it. But if you don't do that, it's because you don't really want to do it. And the majority of us don't get what we want. It's because we really don't truly want it. We think we want it. We think we might want that. Well, I would like to be this, and I would like to be rich. But rich also means you have to change things about you. You have to grow. You have to evolve. Rich doesn't mean that you're just some snobby dude or dudette, you know. It means that you have to actually become a better version of yourself in every given moment. Because if you, as you obtain these things... As you obtain wealth, knowledge, people come to you and they will ask you, how did you do it? And a lot of people won't share. A lot of people will and a lot of people won't. Damn it, share. What's wrong with this other person? Why can't they have it? They just don't need to talk to you if you don't want to share. You share the knowledge. You share from your heart. Because a lot of us are broke because of the poor decisions we make. Poor, get it? A lot of us don't have because we make some stupid decisions about stuff. We we talk ourselves into crap. We talk ourselves into, like, well, you know, I don't want to be like that person. I don't want to be like those people. The heck, what are you talking about? Okay, you want to be broke? You want to be poor? Okay, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to be a monk and you want to go in the temple, sure, go for it. But a lot of people are like, ah, Iggy, I, I, I want to make, I want to have more money. Okay. What is more for you? You make 30, 40,000. Do you want more than that? Yeah. Okay. What does that, what does that mean? Are you willing to go back to school? Are you willing to start a new business? Because it's kind of hard to move into these realms. Well, I don't know. Well, see, that's part of it. You have to know what you want. 
you have to know what your desires and what your needs are. We're so clingy. We all like to cling on to things. People, friends, things. You know, we all like to grab on to things that we, we can control. And the majority of the reason you are where you are is because you like to control what's in front of you. You're, you're, you're kind of like the toy maker in that moment when you're kind of moved through that energy. You're able to dictate some things. So that's comfortable. And that's very comfortable for some people to be able to control that little and a little space, that little energy. But a lot of people aren't willing to do the work. It's just, just plain and simple. The reason you're not manifesting, creating is because you, you have stinking thinking. And you know why? Whatever the programming is in the back of your head, it outplays the programming that you're trying to recreate about yourself and what you are. You don't think you're worthy enough. You don't think you're good enough. You don't think that you deserve it enough. Because if you did deserve it, you would you would be at least in a better track moving forward. Well, I'm here to tell you, you do deserve it. You should have it if that's what you truly want. But your dream has to be bigger than the things that you don't want. Your dream has to be so big that if someone puts your head underwater and all you can think about is air, and that's how you should be thinking about your dreams, your desires, and the things that are important to you, then a lot of people won't do it. They won't do it. They won't do it. They don't even know that they won't do it. A lot of people won't even know. But you watch any successful person, any person who's your friend, any person who you know in your life, if you watch them, if you listen to them and what they say and how they talk to themselves, that's important. And that's the other key. How you look at you. How you speak to you. How you perceive yourself. I'm not saying to be arrogant version of you. I'm saying, how do you see yourself? How do you look at yourself? How do you say, oh, hey, what's up, Iggy? How does Iggy, how do you think you look to other people? How do you feel like, well, I don't care what other people look. I'm just going to be myself. If they don't like me, they can kick me out. They won't there. That's not what I asked. I said, how do you see yourself? How do you perceive yourself? to yourself and to the world. How does the world perceive you? Some people would say, oh, he's great. He's amazing. Oh, other people would say, oh, he's such an asshole. He has no compassion for nobody. He just yells and screams. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. How do you see yourself in, in the world? How does the world see you? Because I'm going to tell you, you're going to be more critical about yourself. You're going to be more down on yourself. You're going to be more on top of yourself than any other human being in this planet would ever be. No, you, you never met my dad. You never met my mom. I don't care about your mom and dad. And You know, you allow, when you, when you become an adult, when you adult, when you become 18, when you become an adult, 26, now we can see the gray. When you become in that place, when you become an adult, you know, you're, you're, you're free, have free range to do whatever you want. Nobody really can tell you what to do except for the programming that you have allowed to manipulate and move you. Shoot, if your parents are gone and they've passed away, you definitely have no excuse for not moving into the direction that you want to move into. There's nobody there to tell you what not to do anymore. You left the house. There's nobody there. But why is it that we hold on? Why? Because it's the programming. If it's told long enough, it becomes subliminal. This program becomes subliminal, and then the subliminal track plays. How do you break down the subliminal track? How do you erase that energy? How do you move it out of the way? How do you get it from, you know, track A to track B to track C? It's going to be work. You got to figure it out. You know, this is how programming works, okay? I had a teacher one time. He asked me, he goes, did you ever notice that there is triple, AA batteries, AAA batteries, D, but there's no B batteries? And I looked at him like, okay, there's no B batteries. There's no B batteries because nobody created B batteries, right? 
and the market doesn't desire because it's all perception. Double air, yeah, good. Triple A, yeah. A, D, D. What's D? But anyhow, B, there's no B batteries. And this is what I'm talking about. It's programming. So it sticks in your head. And you're going through life going, there's no B batteries. <laughs> but there's double A and there's triple A. And there's an occasional D. So the programming that you have inside your noggin, my noggin, is very powerful. It is very entrenched. It is very deep. And it's very suffocating at times. And sometimes our thinking causes us to feel trapped inside of our own head. We're not really trapped. The people have taught us to trap ourselves in there. People have tr taught us, and we have taught people to teach us how to trap ourselves in there. Other people teach us how to treat them. If someone yells at you, what do you usually do? You either respond or you react, right? So depending if you react or you respond will also dictate how you feel about yourself. Someone yells at you, well, I'm not going to say anything. Oh, but yeah, but you heard it and you felt it and it's in there and you don't know where to put it and you don't know where to place it. Or the other, what, someone called you an ass. Oh, you're an ass. You're an ass. You know? You're more, I'm not, you know, than bad. And but yet, but you heard it, but you felt it. It's still there. It doesn't go away. Everything that you ever thought, everything you ever heard has been programmed. It is in here, locked solid in your brain. Is there. Everything that you've ever heard, everything that you've ever seen is there. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. But it's all there. Every single thing that you've done in your life is here. Every event that you turned away or discounted or didn't trust is here. It's there. Why do I have a cheesy grin on my face? Because I know that I'm the worst and the most critical person and the most loving and caring of who I feel about myself. And I'm the only reason I'm not where I want to be because of decisions and the bullcrap lies and stories I tell myself. This is why a lot of humans suffer because we buy into the bullshit. We buy into the crap. We buy into the stories that are told to us. You're bad. You're no good. No, you're not bad. You're no good. It doesn't matter, but we program it. Everything that's ever happened is here. It's stuck. It's programmed. But I'm here to tell you, you can do better. You must be better for your own sake, not for anybody else. You don't do things for other people. You do things for yourself because when you help you, you can help others. When you help others, people remember you. Not because of what you did is what you said in your actions. Because to be love is very powerful. And I tell you, it's not easy being love. It's not easy being love because you know what? It has to be of a place of unconditional. And if it's not unconditional, then what happens? It's judgmental. Oh, I only love you because of this. Oh, I only love you if you treat me like this. I only love you if you're good to me. You have to love people because if you don't love them, it doesn't mean you have to accept their behavior. Their behavior is questionable. That's a whole different thing. You just love them from afar. You love them because you care. You love because you love yourself. Self-love is probably the most difficult thing sometimes for a lot of us. Because it means we have to look ourselves in the mirror and say, are we doing the right things for ourselves as we project out into the world, how the world sees us? Because the world is a cruel and harsh judge of perceptions. It perceives you one way, and it tries to create you in that image. If you like that, then that's fine. 
I don't like that. The world, we must teach the world who we truly are in our hearts because the world is willing to make you whatever it needs it you to be. And when I say world, I'm talking about your family, your friends, the people you associate with. You know, I'm not saying to be defiant and to be angry and to be a certain way. I'm just saying the world is full of people with amazing dreams and desires. And the reason they don't have them or they never obtain them is because of all the programming in here. Because of all the things that they bought into, all the things that was told to them that this is the way it was. This is the way it is. You are this way because without me, you no good. Without me, you won't make it. My dad told me that. My dad used to tell me that. You won't make it without me. You won't make it without me. That's what I do. I went off and started all these businesses over the course of, you know, 20 some years, landscaping, uh, travel agency, uh, junk hauling business, anything to prove my dad I was worthy. I'm going to prove to my dad that I can do it and I'm going to do it. And I ended up going back to the restaurant business and totally miserably failed. But I failed because it wasn't my dream. It wasn't my heart. It wasn't what I wanted. It's what my dad created. It's what he programmed in my head that I wasn't worthy enough to be his son because I could never make it without him. Well, dad, I'm sorry, but I made it pretty damn good in the version of my story and I'm still creating more versions of my story. I love you, dad. I forgive you, dad. I forgive myself for buying into that crapola that you shared because somebody else shared it with you and somebody else told you, you couldn't do something, but I'm going to tell you, dad and mom, I still love you. That doesn't change with your weaknesses and your faults. Like me, my weaknesses and my faults. I still love you. Why? Because I love myself enough to know. And I learned along the way by listening to other teachers, friends, lovers, my spouse, my children, my cousins, my nephews, my nieces, that I am a good person. Didn't need them to validate it. But sometimes a little piece and part of us needs to hear that in order for us to grow. And I'm here to tell you that every day you're growing, every day you're moving in the right direction. Never quit, never give up. Keep moving into the spaces and places of your heart. Because one day, one day you're going to be in a bed or you may be in a tragic scene And go, wow, where are all the people that love me? I'm all alone. Don't be like the girl who walked out of her room alone with nobody in her deceased mother on the floor. Wake up one day and say, wow. All the money in the world didn't make a difference. What made a difference is knowing that I did the best that I could in the moment in time I had. All right, guys. Well, that's it for Iggy Garcia Live today. I will see you guys next time. I'll see you in June. Shaman class in June, June 3rd at Zendoa. I hope you guys enjoyed my show today. I hope it resonated in some level. I hope that you guys were able to connect. I want to thank uh, my friend Janet for being on the line here with me. My niece Marissa and, and Jamie and a few other people who were listening to the show. On Instagram. Like I said, visit me at IggyGarcia.com or you can visit me at on YouTube. Iggy Garcia, it's good to be here. Tell your friends and uh, I will see you next time. It's good to be here. Matakuyasin, Irisikwi, what is above is below, and I will see you soon. Be well, my friends, and be real, be honest, and be truthful to yourself and to your heart. Because you know what? You're the only person who can change the world, starting with your world, that springs out into the world, these creations and manifestations of love. Be truthful, be loving, be honest to yourself, and don't be so hard on yourself. 
if I'm going to leave you with any nugget, don't beat yourself up because you know what? You're doing the best you can with the tools that have been taught to you and the programming that has been placed in you. Work on changing those pieces and parts. With that, I will say, have an amazing, beautiful day. Take care.